What's up, everybody? It's your boy Melvin for another review. A, well, classic and half review. It's more like a comparison because it's October and we have a lot of films, so we're like original and reboot. And this one, I like, what is the difference between this film and the other? And what was better and what was not? So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna compare two films, what I'm doing. Why not start? We're in October, so why not start with the Haunted Mansion? Everybody knows the Haunted Mansion is. It was a popular attraction in Walt in the Walt Disney in Disneyland, and then again in Walt Disney World, Florida, and all over the world. Then in 2003 was a different year with Experimentals, one of the major blockbuster success of Pirates of the Caribbean, a weird downgrade for Country Bears, and of course the Haunted Mansion, but. I'm going way ahead of myself because I'm going to do a comparison between which one did and which one did not. I'm talking about which was good and which one didn't, which one had a call following, and which one did get some success. I'm talking about The Haunted Mansion, the 2003 starring Eddie Murphy, and the 2023 reboot. It's kind of weird that each one ends with a three, right? Wow. <laughs> And yeah, I seen them both. I like them both. But I want to see how it goes from story, cast, the music score, design. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, dare to enter, foolish mortals. There's 99 here, but there's only room for a thousand. Any volunteers? <laughs> So yeah, let's go with, let's see, let's start with, let's start with the opening title of the Haunted Mansion. Let's start with the 2003, if you recall the opening title for the Haunted Mansion of the 2003 one, had this ear, you see the Disney logo, the original, the, you know, the, ca the blue background, the castle white silhouette. This one had the eerie tone, like an eerie music as it starts forming, you know what y'all talking about, before I plays the iconic organ music and lightning flashes we see the mansion right there and being welcomed by the ghost host welcome foolish mortals right there until we got a credit score it says haunted mansion and we're already in looks like the 19th century new orleans in a mardi gras party at gracie manor let's try it with 2023 Unfortunately, since this is the 100th anniversary of Walt Disney Studio, Walt Disney, you know, the 100th anniversary, of course, we're going to put the new intro, which is the 100th anniversary logo. I was kind of expecting something similar like they did with Hocus Pocus 2 back in November, back in September, the end of September and October. We all see the intro for that, for Hocus Pocus 2. That was pretty dope. I was hoping to do the same thing with. The Haunted Mansion, the 2023 reboot, because, okay, some people did, like, a play around with the intro with, okay, who knows Frank and Weenie back in 2013, 2014? What was it 2012? I don't know. Had this eerie classic horror vibe, and somebody was, I saw a YouTuber did that and played, this would be a good intro for the Haunted Mansion, like, that, like, ooh, that looked pretty good. But unfortunately, we have the Haunted, we have the anniversary logo, Betty. Okay, music score. So the music for the 2003 one was done by Mark Mancina, which actually the music was pretty catchy, actually. It had this elegance, something so like classical, and give that eerie tone. Which each to like, example, when you had the opening intro, it combined with the story where we see the flashback in the Mardi Gras, we see Gracie... Like a Mardi Gras, it's like like a uh, looks like a, his wedding party. Well, before the wedding, it's like the the engagement party at Mardi Gras time. We see him. Um, the music starts playing. We saw the images like tarot cards flying, everybody dancing in the ballroom scene. It's where he then the music starts to beat up, built up as he receives a letter of her suicide letter, trying to race before time, but she dies. Until we hit the cores, as we see his hanged body in the attic. And then we 
So let's down, we see the manager right out as the eerie organ is playing the classic theme before it comes to day. The 2023, we start with the intro, and then we had a home dodge by the mystic herself, Madame Leota, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, beginning us, Welcome, foolish mortals, to New Orleans, a most paranormal place. I forgot the rest, but she mentioned that death is not the end, but the beginning. Until we had a collapse of the mansion before it comes out as a painting in a bar in in the French Quarter, New Orleans. When I get to the opening score music, until we see the main one of the main characters, uh, sorry, played by Lakeith Stanfield, playing Ben Mathis, who's a astrophysicist turned ghost ghost tourist, you know, tour guide. Then we see the a New Orleans funeral band. You know those band. Okay, the people in New Orleans will know when there's a funeral. You see those bands, jazz bands, playing, marching for for your funeral. That intro. Before we get some names, title cards. Until we we never. Okay, we reach the mansion, but we don't see the mansion. We see the the shadow, but we know where we are. Until our two other characters. Gabby and her son, played by Rosario Dawson and Chase W. Dillon, when they get ran out by being chased by a suit of armor until we see the mansion and the hat box goes silhouette with his box go and say, Hurry back, hurry back. <laughs> and we get the hot mansion title right there. <clears throat> but yeah, both of them are cool, but. Sorry, but I think the toiletry intro had more like a beating there with the intro because you get to see the story, like the music right there, seeing the flashback. Here, I do like Jamie Lee Curtis' voice right there because it's she's quite similar to, I forgot the name, this voice actress. She does, she was the original Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty and Lady Tremaine from Cinderella, that one. Who's the actual voice for the ride in the Haunted Mansion, Disneyland, Disney World? I don't know if her voice was dubbed for the French version in Phantom Manor. Or the one in Japan. You gotta check that out. <clears throat> but yeah. As for the music by for the 20L Tree, it was done by Chris Bowers. But the music is pretty good. You have some of that jazzy vibe. And also you still have some music homage as well from the mansion. I do like, there's some like, okay, you have one scene where Madame Leona is talking about what actually happened in the mansion, which we get a flashback. It's kind of great. People say Gracie. Well, yeah, it's called Gracie Manor. You can see a giant G. It's also based on the lore in the Haunted Mansion ride. Not confusing. Sometimes, okay, there's something about the 2003 one. They were Gracie, more like a lovesick guy than... I like how they use this Gracie as a man who was lovesick, trying to get find contact his loss and love, until they brought something more evil, which tricked him into killing himself, and trapping Leona in her in her crystal ball. Which, well, at least we know how she got in there. I'm sorry, but when I saw Jamie Lee Curtis as Madame Leona in her outfit, she looks like a Time Lord from Doctor Who, literally the headdress. She looks like a time lord, sorry, time lady. <laughs> it looks pretty dope though. Like, I kind of like it. I like the design of the mansion as well. Oh yeah, let's talk about designs of each of the mansions. If you seen the twenty oh three, had this mansion. Damn, so, so right in the middle of the bayou, out of nowhere, this gigantic facade of a mansion. That's pretty dope. I think that's the one thing people like was design of that mansion. This gigantic marble structure. Covered in vines in the middle of the bayou of Louisiana. Literally. And you got the other one, the 2003, which is slightly based on the mansion from the Walt Disneyland, the Disneyland attraction. Literally, if you see the Disneyland attraction and the 2003, looks similar to cool in the property as well, like the entryway. It's like in the one in the right, the attraction at Facade in Disneyland. I like that. 
And let's talk about interior. If you remember the interior from the uh, 2003, it had this elegant one, looked like some type of like a manor. Had the grand staircase in the center of the main di to the dining room, the clock in it. And here we in the 2023, it's slightly simple, like a main hallway. You have the stairway over there, main studies over there. Similar to like the one in, in Disneyland, but yeah. I do like the they put a lot of references of the attraction. If you've seen the attraction, you've been to the rise, you you'd be the first one to catch them as Easter eggs everywhere with the 2023 one. For the 2003 one, you'll see a couple like a couple of few like the I'm trying to remember like the the looking wandering bus when Eddie Murphy passes by. You got the the suction door, the endless hallway. I think that was part of it. I don't know. I don't remember. The acting, like, references of some, like, older proposed ideas from the mansion, which is mentioned here in the 2003, which they get some points. I'm trying to remember which one. So let's talk about character development. We got, okay, for 2003, they try to make this one more, like, like more comedy and less dark, which, of course, kind of went, you know, Guess first of all, the haunted mansion, you're in a literal haunted mansion full of ghosts. What's so funny about that? I know. The original idea of Disney was more like, you know, like originally the mansion was supposed to be like rotting decay, but Disney said, nope. In this park, it's clean and pristine. We'll let the ghosts take care of the inside, we'll take care of the outside. You seen Phantom Manor? Oh boy, that is more darker. I kind of wish they choose that mansion than for 2003. That would be more fun. And we'll make a good box office along with Curses of Black Pearl. Look at that film. Okay, take example, Curses of Black Pearl. You got action? Gore? Pirate? Dude. Skeletons you see in the moonlight? Come on. I thought the house could do better than that. I mean, literally. It's supposed to be a house full of 90, 999 spirits. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Zombies. Oh, yeah. Soil Dream. They put one thing that kind of got me spooked the zombies from the mausoleum. Oh, yes. What's more scarier? A mausoleum for zombies, or you just. or then the whole damn. When you're about to escape, the whole the door closes right in front of you. You are a guy who's afraid of spiders, and a bunch of tarantulas popped up appear out of the front door. Oh yeah, for a person who's claustrophobic, a arachnophobic, and see zombies trying to go rip you limb from limb. Oh yeah, that'll be one hell of a heart attack. <laughs> and the zombie designs, it was the designs of the zombies though. Wow. The one zombie skin show me is the one is is screaming. You see the inside of his jaw. You see from the inside. Jeez Louise. Jesus. The Toronto Tree? Well, you know there's no zombies in Disneyland. They just in the ride because it's, it was an idea to expand the you know, the movie pace. In the 2003, it's more like, Gabby, what's going on? And one thing the 2003 didn't do as the 2023 is, who were these residents of the manor? These 999 ghosts. They mentioned every single one. Like the, du the, the, the brothers, the dueling brothers, Constance Hatchaway, Gracie. Explain what happened in the mansion, including... Where Keith and Owen Wilson's character talking to Dan DeVito's character at each the guy at a restaurant about the history of the mansion when he's showing deeds, explaining that the mansion was not the property was never even re recorded in records and appeared out of nowhere until Gracie, who was played by, let's see, who was play who played Gracie. Jesus. I try to remember. Okay, uh huh. Shit. I was trying to remember who played Gracie, the actor who played him. I forgot his full name. William Gracie. 
While this ruling grace is more different than the one from the 2003, he has the same last name, but his full name is Edward Gracie. So technically, it's a different Gracie, but yeah, remember, this William Gracie wife died of pneumonia, while this Edward Gracie, she died from suicide, supposed suicide, aka poisoned by the butler, and driven to hang himself. And a curse has been there. Uh-huh. Typical romance, I tell you what. But yeah, let's talk about villains. Okay, yeah, no. The most typical boring shit. The butler did it. Yeah. Yeah. But the 2003 used a character so popular, it was never done. The, ha the hat box ghost. This was a character that no one knows. Wait, who is this guy? What's his backstory? Because he he only made one appearance in the original attraction back when he opened in the 60s. And then they got rid of his, his animatronic. But his character is still in, featured in artworks, comic books. Literally, if you look through old Walt Disney photos archive, you see the Hatbox skills, the original animatronic. Boys wonder, who was he? Why do you call him the Hatbox Ghost? What's his lore? Why was he in the attic, along with the bride? This is why they massacrate the lore, the, the history, or the backstory of the Hatbox Ghost, or his now official name, Alistair Crump. Played by Dread Leto. For once, I kind of like his performance because, one, I don't see his face. All I see is the Hatbox Ghost's face. At least I'm, I'm quite content. The other thing, they connected another mansion from another Disney World attraction. The Haunted Mansion from Florida. The New England Haunted Mansion, or it's now dubbed Crump Manor. Well, we have Gracie Manor in New Orleans. Now we have Crump Manor in New England. Well... Look at the one in the one in Paris, France. It's called Ravenswood. Ravenswood? Yeah, Ravenswood Manor. Phantom Manor. Each named by the founding the, the founding family, like Gracie Manor, Ravenswood Manor, and officially Crump Manor. So yeah, we got our official name the name official name of the Haunted Mansion UK in New England Square in Florida. Crump Manor. Nice. I kind of like it that how they made the fat bugs and ghosts more terrifying and more evil than we know. This is a guy, the only way he can get out of the mansion is by collecting 1,000 souls, and he's been doing it. Jesus, I do like the design of the hot bugs ghosts for this one. At first, when Keith's character is in the spirit realm wandering looking for him, at first he's like, oh, I'm going to escape. Nope, you see his head in the damn box. <laughs> I do like the gag when they're in the police station and Dan DeVito's character trying to help him describe this hot box ghost. And we see the sketch is actually pretty cool. And he asks him, now do it again with flesh. And boom, we get the backstory of Alistair Crump. With his awesome background, history. And I do, when I first saw this film, I did it in my previous review on the 2023. 20, when I saw the haunted, the New England Haunted Mansion, like, Jesus, I got giddy right there. Because that was the first Haunted Mansion I ever went. My, I'm not joke. I went to Magic Kingdom, like, twice. First time was in a... Actually, they were both from school trips back in the summer. And that was just pretty damn cool. I didn't know there was a nerd design of the Haunted Mansion. I said people who don't, who've never been to the attraction or never seen the movie, would well, not understand this. But those who've seen the movie, they know what that mansion is from. Hell yeah! Actually, there's two of them: one here in Florida, one in Japan. The reason I don't mention the one in China is called Mystic Manor, which is more like it's kind of like Night of the Museum, literally. But the way the Hatbox goes, it's kind of great. More, I think, okay, the Hatbox goes is way, like a way better villain than the butler. I'm sorry, but 
I do have respect for the actor who plays uh, plays Ramsley, Terrence Stamp. If you don't know him, he was General Zog in Superman. The one with George Reed, the Kryptonian General General Zog. Which, of course, serves. I kind of like he's more menacing. I know this Ramsley, like you know the but the Ghost Butler. He he is dragged to he get dragged to hell literally by the devil. Well, in, in the twenty twenty three, that Alistair gets banished by by using the banishment spell along with with Tiffany Haddish's character of Harriet along with. Jamie Lee Curtis's Madame Leota, both of them combining their powers to banish the Habox back to where he once he came. I think he's more like he wants to help, but yet he's still evil. That's actually pretty cool. I like his style. Like, okay, he's the Habox with the top hat, the coat, the cane. Damn. Includes appearance after he finished using Danny DeVito's character. After procession, you see his full form, literally. His head appears. The medical laugh. Jesus. Let's talk about, okay. Okay, casting. I have no problem with Eddie Murphy. In, in, okay, Eddie Murphy was a popular comedian, literally. Nutty Professor. That was another one. I try to remember what other film. Uh, Come to America. That's another one. And a lot more. Shrek. Wait, did Shrek come out in 2003? I don't know. I gotta check. But yeah, but... In the Haunted Mansion? I think this was trying to do like, be more like, you know, comedic and less scary, but then it backfired. Okay, Jimmy... Okay, Amy Murphy's character, Jim Ever, is a workaholic. Plain and simple. He doesn't give a kid damn. He dragged his family to a manor after his wife received a mysterious call about the from Ramsay about the manor, only inviting her, but him. Well, he dragged the whole family and look what happened. Holy shit. And it turns out we get a whole fiasco. It turns out that when Ramsay saw the photo of Ever Mr. Ever's wife, he had an idea that, oh, I'll give you her as his lo- as my master's long lost love to break the damn curse. <laughs> Need I say more? In the 2023 one, we have a lot of cast characters. First, we meet Lakeith Stanfield, character Ben Mephis, in the bar of the during during New Year's Eve, where he met his wife. Ugh. I remember, what was the name of his wife? Sorry, I'm trying to find the name of his... Ugh, never mind. Met his wife, Alicia, during New Year's. Explained about that, that she's a tour guy. Him is a astrophysicist. You know, NASA. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, his wife died in a car crash. And Ben gets up his career and continues to run her ghost tour. But fortunately, Ben searches famous haunted places looking for a sign of his wife. Yeah. But eventually, he becomes disappointed and depressed when he finds no evidence of ghosts. <sighs> now we jump to meeting Gabby and her son moved from New, from New York into New Orleans into Gracie Manor to turn it into a bed and breakfast only to learn it's haunted. No shit. <laughs> Of course, it's also a gag. Beware of hitchhiking ghosts. Which, of course, you enter the mansion. If you leave, a ghost will follow you home. And that's what happened to each of them. I think, okay, for Gabby and her son, I don't know which ghost they had. It like, okay, I saw the background. It looked like the mummy and our two guys. For Keith... It was the the Mariner. For Owen Wilson's character, he said a woman was missing a face. I think he's talking about the Ghost Bride, Miss Constance Hatchaway. And that was the first ghost hit that Gabby's son saw, the Ghost Bride. 
And from all the rooms, he chose her room when he saw her pants ate. Not tonight. Try to pull a sheet. Nope, she vanished. Boy, <laughs> you chose the wrong room. I do have the use the night, the suit armor. That was an old gag they used at Disneyland, but they stopped new to it because let's just say it wasn't working. <laughs> Sorry. That's all the same. Of course they brought the the uh, the medium. Of course guess her spear was. A man on a horse, so they literally hit her. She was pissed to say, Don't you know? That, uh, ghost horse charging in your bedroom? Yeah. Who doesn't want a ghost horse waking up in the middle of the night in their bedroom? <laughs> of course. And then we got Dan DeVito, which, um, he never has his ghost. He tried to get his documents back after Keith and Owen's character stole it. And out of nowhere, he gets shoved out of the chair while they try to contact Madame Miota. Oh, yeah. The mystic? She lied in the mud. Danny? The half of us goes trying to murder him and get him roll killed by a truck. <laughs> but yeah, okay. The whole set, the whole area. The 2003 version, well, when we arrive at the mansion, the Evers, they see the back, the, where the graveyard is. Jesus fuck. It looks like a whole land, like a whole park there. Literally a whole graveyard. You see a mountain... You see a hillside full of tombstones. I'm not joking. In the 2023 version, there is a graveyard in the back, but it's a private estate. So you don't, you don't see a bunch of graves like the 2003. You see a black, like the ones in the right, you know, like the whole light straight. But still, it looks pretty cool. Then we meet the ghost. Of the, okay, let's talk about the ghost. Okay, in the 2003, we met only... Okay, we have... Ramsey, the butler, Edward Gracie, the two servants, Emma and Ezra. And we meet the rest of the ghosts in the cemetery lot. Well, we got a couple of recognizables from the, the attraction. Like the Hitchhiking Ghost, the Archer, the Duelist, the Once the Cabin T, and the Singing Bus. And that's the... I think that was a good thing they didn't put in the 2023 because, let's face it, have you seen them helping, trying to help the uh, Jim Evers and his children? Where's the damn key? Exactly. And the ending, they brought them along, along with Madame Leota. Here, in 2023, Gabby decides to stay in the mansion with, and with the resident spirits. And they're happy with it. After banishing Alistair back to to hereafter. Now let's talk about Madame Leota. As you know, Madame Leota is like a main character, a problem. One, if you're an attraction, she was originally voiced by... Damn, I keep forgetting her name. Because I know she was the voice of, of Beloveson in Sleeping Beauty, the original... And Lady Tremaine from Cinderella. She voices that character. And oh boy. Have you seen the track of that tone? In the 2003 version. You had Jennifer Tilly. Playing Mount Leota. And I have no problem with her. Is that she's too recognizable for two films. The Chucky series. And Family Guy. Playing Bonnie Watts Swanson. She did appear in a movie with Jim Carrey called Liar Liar. Playing this toxic divorcee wife. Jesus. But don't be fooled. She's a mean blackjack player. So don't be trying to gamble against her. It's better to bet on her than against her. As the 2023 one, we had Jimmy Lee Curtis as Mount Leota. And tell you the truth. I kind of like her version of Mount Leota. It seemed like similar to the one in the attraction. Her appearance, including her, the way she, they managed to put her in the crystal ball. Her hairstyle is similar to the one in the attraction than Jim, than Jim Tilly's, which was more, you no know, eerie green mist. Her hair is like 
flooring green a lot of makeup while you have Jamie Lee she has less makeup as a hey, since when the the man you see the do you see makeup on the Madeline Miyoto on the attractions no right but I do like there's a difference because with the Jennifer Tilly she's just doing the same real like the curse and everything it starts flowing around the table scaring the shit out of Jim Evers and a maniacal laugh well, in this one, the 2023, J Jamie Lee's Mantle Miota actually shows the rest of the the of the main protagonists what actually happened in the mansion, telling the story with William Gracie when he summoned her to for the duty seance for a year under a full moon. What she told him by walking the spirits, they'll be walking in something. That should not be here, which it actually did. When Gracie receives a supposed message from his lost love by telling her, telling him to join him in the afterlife, which of course he poisoned himself by cyanide. When her character arrives, see his body right there. She uses her crystal ball to see through the spirit world this evil spirit, and lo and behold, we see the hot boss ghost grab her by the neck and pull her into her crystal ball, trapping her there forever. Which I kind of funny, find it funny to say how long it's been? A month? Which everyone's like, ooh. I like how they, she mentions that the spirit needs 966 <laughs> souls. Wait, it's 966? Try to remember that. Yeah, it's 966. In fact, when Danny's character mentions, hold him, people. There's been 33 deaths since that bald lady was trapped in there, Crystal Ball. So he does not need 9966. He has 999. Unless you want to plan some early funeral arrangements, we'll have to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sorry, I did that on myself. But it's actually like yeah, he adds the map that that remember that how much time passed. Like there's already been thirty three victims in the mansion. Well, the Habox Authority has nine hundred and sixty six in total is nine hundred and ninety nine, and he needs a thousand to escape the manor. Let's talk about the plot here. Okay, twenty oh three. It's like a murder mystery and romance. Obviously. The Evers are arriving at the manor. They actually they split up after a stormy night. Which, of course, they all split up. That's when the kids found out about... They found the portrait of Sarah. Of Elizabeth. Who looks exactly like their mother. Which, of course, they're helped by the servants. Ezra and, and Emma. Until they're confronted by Ezra by Ramsley, which of course is a threatening tone that they shouldn't her children. The children that should not post the brain call that brainless husband of hers. Yeah. Of course became a how to break the curse. Uh, the truth will be known, you must find the key. Enter the tomb of the great dead oak and travel down beneath the ground and find the crypt that has no name, or or your fate will be the same. Yeah, and then we gotta find the re the red letter that must be read, or soon you'll be filled with dread. A red letter. Well, it's, it's revealed that Ramsey murdered Elizabeth because Gracie wanted to throw everything for love. <laughs> well, in the twenty twenty three is like. We're out trying to understand the history of the mansion and also why the spirits want them back in the mansion when they're trying to leave. Which is actually pretty cool. I like how they start introducing all these all the residents of the mansion, which hey. You really want to know about that? I do like the uh, the dream scene where like his character was sleeping and he sees the silhouette of the hotbox ghost. And see his dead wife walking by. He's in the graveyard. We see the the caretaker. We see the hitchhiking ghost right there. Now of course he's running from the graveyard. 
with skeletons trying to gra- some skellies trying to grab him with his wife, and then he wakes up. Oh boy, he always got his nuts chopped by the ghost bride. Literally, he tried to say, "I want you, teen ghost babe." Really? This is a wo- really, dude. This woman chopped her husband's head off. Five. I don't, think if you want to tell you the truth, I thought she'll be the main villain because really. Okay, between the attraction, she's like she's the main villain. There's even a painting portrait in the stretching hallway that is confirmed that is her. And that's her husband because she whacked him the axe in the in this on his dome. Right there. Then we see the other ghosts like the organist. We see Actually, we see the drunk from the, the chandelier, and then in the flashback, we see the uh, the one who you know the one that blows the birthday cake. That one, we see the opera singer past the endless hallway, the duelist, include Gracie wandering to find his wife with with a lantern. You got a lot of spirits, a lot to add from the mansion's lore. And finally, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. The ending. How it ended? Well, in 2003, when Jim Evers shows the real letter, which of course we see, oh boy, did I forget when Edward goes loco crazy when he tried to convince Sarah that, that he is his love, and we see this ghost, all the specters of the uh, dancers dancing around him, he started going crazy with the music building up. And of course, yeah. He revealed that he managed to reveal he was the murderer, and the only way to break the curse is by poisoning, poisoning Sarah the same way he did to Elizabeth. Jesus, why does everything about poison? <laughs> I don't like what he the truth be revealed. The devil shows up as like a fire dragon, literally he drags him to hell, and he tries to drag Jim to hell. While in the twenty twenty three. Well, ha- the hot boss goes, aka Alistair Crump, tries to convince Lakeith's character to join him to see his long love, to to make sure not to harm Gabby and the rest. Which, of course, you know he only needs a thousand, one soul to complete a thousand. But fortunately, he distracted enough to when. Danny's character brings a piece of the top hat that was burned in the fireplace. And... I keep forgetting her name, sorry. Tiffany had his character Harriet managed to free Madeline Leota from her crystal ball temporarily to help it with the banishing spell. Which, of course, they managed to do that. But to say repeat the words return when Henches Creek... RETURN! Literally, you see, okay, I like the Keeps character when he just did the, the, you know, the, okay, who knows the, uh, the film of the, uh, the famous 300, the Greek war of the Spartans, where he said, this is Sparta! Yeah, that's what he did to the Hatbuzz Ghost, the Sparta move, and sent it back to the Neverworld. Which, we see all the ghosts where Owen's character said, wait, why are they leaving? Because they're used to the mansion, they love it there. Even Jamie Lee Curtis' character, Man Leona, prefers her back in her crystal ball that says more comfortable. Which we see all the spirits happy, finally free from Alistair's terror. And we see Andy where I think we get some summer moments where where the keys at his home, finds the cat again, beside has a dating text that's tater tot because one, that was his wife's favorite food, tater tots. So he rides in the manor. Of course, they decorate for Halloween. Of course, I guess he's dating Gabby. Now she's working at the hospital. Which, of course, she decides to stay in the manor. But she was convinced by Harry, of course. <laughs> Soon, they all decide. And then we get this title, The End. We see all the spirits outside the manor. And start to get this jazz music. And it's actually the jazz music of Grim Grinning Ghosts. And we have this mini Halloween Mardi Gras party. We see, like, these dancing ghost girls. The you know, the can can girls, yeah. Well, everybody's dancing, and I swear that was Michael Jackson right in the background. The type of suit he wore, like a military suit with the decorations. 
It's like that. It'll be like... <laughs> I like the the when they sing Green Green Girls with that jazzy music thing. It's catchy. And that was it. But yeah. Overall, this is a tough choice between the 2003 and the 2023. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to go with the 2023 because I do like the music and the style of the mansion, but when it comes to how to work with comedy and horror. The Toy Story 3 did good because they focus more on the his the, the horror and a little bit of comedy. While the Toy Story 3, because remember, they had a comedy star in the title name, Eddie Murphy's Haunted Mansion. <laughs> Literally. While in the Toy Story 3, you only had like the names of the five cast members, like with Lafitte Stanfield, Tiffany Haddish. On Wilson, Dan DeVito, and Rosario Dawson. That's it. And if you've seen the posters, you only have Eddie Murphy holding the main plaque of the High Magic behind two of the singing busts, Madame Leota and Ramsley with the bomb of the mansion, and the skeleton horse pulling the hearse. <laughs> While the other one, well, I think which one, because, and the other one you have Gabby. You have Alec Keith, Rosario Dawson, Owen Wilson, Tiffany Haddish, Dan DeVito, and Chase W. Dillon looking at Man Lowe's crystal ball and seeing the mansion right there. To me, I have to go with 2023. Although, the 2003 has gained a cult following afterwards. It became a popular film to watch during October. And I'm not the other one. I have to see these, both these films five times to... Let's see what I miss. And tell you the truth, I like them both. I remember seeing the the first one, the twenty oh three, when I was in first grade. I thought this film was the best film ever until I got older and learned more. Like, oh, that's how bad it was. I saw the Rotten Tomatoes. Holy shit! The twenty oh three. People say it's a it bomb, but to me, I don't think it bombed. The problem was it was released in a bad timing. Meaning, it was released between Barbie and Oppenheimer. You think this movie would actually make a good money? When I went to the movie to see this film, there's still people wearing pink watching Barbie and Oppenheimer. If this film was released like in the first week of October, because I think it would be safe because have you seen The Exorcist? The new Exorcist movie? It sucked. This movie would have even... I think this, the 2023 Haunted Mansion movie would destroy The Exorcist, literally. But unfortunately, because you yeah, had another horror film as well, The Nun 2 and A Haunting Venice, which those two are going neck and neck and those two are popular films. And Haunting in Venice is the most popular film of the, the 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 film trilogy. Because if you see like the top three best ones, Death in the Nile is in the bottom. The second is Murder of the Order Express, and Venice is on top. While the Nun 2 is more darker, more gorier, which when they did a test review, the audience wanted more gore, more scare. Hey, and they brought it well. It was actually pretty cool. But yeah, to me, I think 2003 is more of a cult following. Yeah. It was trying to do like something similar like Pies of the Caribbean back at the time when it first came out in 2003. A level country. Well, 2003 was a different time. It was a more experimental time. Yeah, like Country Bears. The High Magic became a. No, the Pies of the Caribbean. Curse of Black Bear became a massive success. Blockbuster success, if you ask tell me. I imagine, well, if it chooses a different story, like they use Phantom Manor, it'll be the same success as Curse of the Black Pearl, but... Mm. 2023, on the other hand, it did pretty good. I consider it a success. When I read the comments, people actually enjoyed it and consider it a success as well. The problem is, you, you're just showing it to the wrong people. Like, wrong critics, wrong reviewers. They just shit on it and say, Don't watch it, it sucks! Says who, shithead. But yeah, to me, 2023 has my favorite, but there's always a space for 
for Tony Dre in my heart because hey, that's the one I like started from and do enjoy it. And I do like the music too, like Grim Grinning Ghost from by the Damper Dance. It was a bit like a minute long than the 2023 one. It was just the like a second close, like around 50 seconds. I kind of wish it made more longer because hey, it'll be pretty more catchy. But yeah. But uh, what would you what do you guys think? Which one's your favorite ones? The 2003 Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy, or the recent 2023 one with with Lakeith Stanfield, Tiffany Haddish, Owen Wilson, Danny DeVito, and Rosario Dawson? Well, tell me which one's your favorite? Do you like them both? Do you have a certain favorite? Let me know in the comments down below and. If you have other films you want me to do a review on this spooky season, because hey, we're in October, so I think I do Halloween Town because hey, Halloween Town was another favorite of mine during childhood while I watched during October. I might do that, but until then, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, and also leave a comment down below. Tell me which one, which one's your favorite. Do you like them both? What would you prefer? Which one is better? Comment down below. And we're our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers or at least 500k by the end of this year. So let's do this. And until then, have a great day, right? And have a spooky day. Peace.